George is the engineering and technology manager at Rubicon Oil Field International. And I want to point out that the company initials are ROI, quite clever. George uh, has a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering and actually has a Master's in Petroleum Engineering where his thesis was modeling and simulation of simultaneous drilling and underreading. So he is a subject matter expert in our discussion today. And I want to thank George for joining us. He was uh, formerly with Tesco, where he worked on uh, underreading product that was associated with casing while drilling. He led the um, Excuse me. He led the cutting structure design and development of the Rhino Reamer product line. Um, also worked with Slumberger on drilling uh, optimization of the BHA that contained an under reamer and a drill bit, so a dual cutting structure uh, optimization. Uh, he was with Inventure, where, of course, if you're going to expand tubulars, you better have a good drift diameter borehole. So uh, keenly aware of this topic then, and he started, he joined Rubicon in 2018. Uh, as an applications engineer, and he, as I said, he is currently the engineering and technology manager. So, uh, with that, George, I'll uh, turn it over to you. Thank you, Blaine. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. All right, perfect. Uh, thank you, Blaine, so much for uh, this great introduction. Uh, good morning, gentlemen uh, and ladies. Uh, today's talk will be focused on uh, wellbore quality and how we can uh, fix the problem at its source. So the agenda is going to look like this. Uh, we're going to start with talking about the wellbore quality. Is it important? And if it's important, why is it so important? Uh, what are the impacts of geomechanics? Uh, on the wellbore quality and what is the impact also on the drill strain mechanics on that wellbore quality. In terms of literature, what's out there and uh, what's been documented with our, from our um, pioneers in the industry. And also, uh, we're going to talk about our product, which is the Gondra Reamer, which is a smart stabilizer and how we can help, it can help uh, on this subject, with the, which is a wellbore quality. And then we'll end with the uh, couple of case studies and uh, we'll conclude at the end. So to start off with, why is wellbore quality so important? So what is our main objective here? The main objective is we want to drill as fast as possible, okay? So we want to increase ROP, right? In order for us to increase ROP, we would like to maximize the weight transfer. So uh, in theory, if you would like to uh, drill faster, you want to increase the weight transfer to the bit. So we would like, in, in theory, this relationship is linear until it's not. And that's when we're entering into an inefficient zone where we're not drilling efficiently for different reasons. And that's what we call the founder point whenever we go from linear to start decreasing in um, drilling efficiency. And we can look at MSE, we can look at different KPIs, but uh, this is the theory behind this. And in order for us to maximize that weight transfer and to keep drilling uh, as fast as possible, we need to take a very deep look to the wellbore quality. Because if we don't, if we sacrifice that wellbore quality, you're going to start having issues such as spiraling, such as uh, wellbore tortuosities, such as uh, wellbore imperfections, and we're going to dig into all of that in a second. And if you start going into that route, you're gonna see a decrease in weight on bit, which is gonna defeat our uh, objective of maximizing ROP. You're gonna start seeing bit DHA whirl, torque fluctuation, lateral shock, and the worst whenever everything happens together. And we'll talk about the spiral of death and the literature side. And all of these, you put them to combine together, it's a recipe for decrease in, uh, uh, Decrease in, low, uh, in ROP, rate of penetration. It's going to increase your non-productive time, which is everybody's nightmare. And you're going to start, it's going to be very, very costly, which is damage BHA components, bits, et cetera, et cetera. So in order for us to avoid that, we need to take care of the wellbore quality. There's no way around it. But make no mistake, let's not focus on drilling only. It's very, very, very important to look at the whole wildlife cycle. Because at the end of the day, you're... Uh, just like uh, our previous uh, speakers were saying, it's very important not only to focus on drilling because 
what comes after drilling is also extremely important and it's gonna affect your overall well, such as the deployment of casing. We don't wanna deploy uh, casing or uh, put them at a certain depth, that undesired depth, such as short of the design, because uh, it's gonna also affect your cementation. And when I'm talking about cementation, mainly I'm talking about the centralization programs, uh, the centralizers that we're running, and eventually the production wellbore integrity. So once we talk about, in general, the wellbore quality, it's not affecting only drilling, it's affecting everything comes to drilling. And I think it could be uh, misleading or uh, sometimes it's a mistake only to focus on drilling. So this is why it's very important to do. Now, however, even if we're looking at all of that, we have stuff that happens whenever we're drilling, such as, like, such as, uh, uh, formation that's going to collapse on you, such as a mobile formation, reactive formation, uh, overpressured formation, unconsolidated formation, all of those, these are type of formation, these are challenging formation that's going to cause you issues, such as creating ledges, uh, creating ledges, tight spots, um, and all of those that, and restriction in the well bore, which means eventually you might get stuck down hole. So, when we say that, if you're getting stuck down hole, that's an increase in non-productive time and a lot of dollars. Nobody wants to get stuck down hole, especially leave the BHA behind. And then if we're lucky, and if you're really lucky and you end up tripping out of the well bore and you made it safely, uh, you pulled your string to surface, you left behind, we left behind a well bore with a very bad well bore quality in terms of uh, the well bore war is very tortuous, it's spiral. So what does that mean? It means that your casing deployment, they're gonna be affected and everything after it, just like we talked about in the well life cycle. So wouldn't be important so to talk about having a proper stabilization that I'm gonna just talk about in a second in the BHA mechanics, but wouldn't it be important also to have a component BHA or a drill string that's gonna provide you that safety net, that insurance against these geomechanical challenges, such as a smart stabilizer. So what is a smart stabilizer? It's actually a stabilizer with passive PDC cutting structure, meaning this passive PDC cutting structure, they're not gonna do anything unless absolutely needed, unless you're tripping out of the well and you have this tight spot and you actually need a PDC to open the well so you can ensure this uh, tripping out of the well bore. And that would be something looking like uh, Gunder Reamer that I will talk about in a second. So. We discussed the geomechanics. What about the drill string mechanics? Okay, so we know for everything that we discussed, um, Blaine, uh, you, you touched on that subject very well. Uh, we need uh, fixed band motor housings and uh, assemblies with fixed band motors to create certain uh, inclination or to create certain build. Whether we're talking about going from vertical to curve or we're talking about the curve, you're building that curve section whether you're in your lateral, you're doing some kind of corrections, you will need some kind of fixed band housing. So when we think about that, and then you take a step back and you look at your BHA mechanics, okay, well, in nature, you're going to create some kind of spiraling. There's no way around it, right? So if we're doing though, it's very well documented. If you look very closely to the standard survey, uh, they're not going to give you the big picture there's going to show you some straight lines and that's not what actually happening. And if you take a deeper look, such as uh, continuation inclination, calculated surveys, et cetera, et cetera, you will notice that we are creating a lot of ledges and these ledges are because of uh, the way we're having our BHA design or even by having a fixed band motor housing and by nature, you're going to create this tortuosity. And also you go from the sliding, rotating, sliding, rotating sequence we realize we are creating ledges. So when we're talking about ledges and we already have a tortuous well bore because of how our uh, drill, drill string is designed, well, now you are uh, damaging that well bore quality, meaning it's gonna affect uh, your drilling performance if we, can, if we don't take care of it, if we don't stabilize and space and um, uh, space the stabilizers in the BHA in a very optimized way. Because if we don't do that, uh, we're taking that ledger problem, we're taking that spirality problem, and then you're making it worse and worse and worse and worse, leading to the spiral of death that I'm just gonna talk about in a second in the literature. So 
So we have this drill string mechanics, and then if we don't take care of this problem in terms of the ledgers and the spirality, it's gonna affect your drilling performance. There is no way around it. So we, 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 we often hear about the complaints about um, low performance of motors. Well, and then it's, 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 it's very easy for us to blame it on the motor design or, 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 or whatever, or just like, let's just shorten the bit to bend. So yeah, shorten the, your bit to bend will help, uh, decreasing your fixed bend angle would help, but also we need to stabilize that BHA better because if you don't, you're going to see severe torque fluctuation. Uh, you're going to see an increase in lateral vibration and ultimately uh, you're going to see start decrease in uh, weight transfer to the bit. And how do we know that? All we do is just to look at the weight on bit and the differential pressure and then we know that you still have the same amount of weight or sometimes it's increasing, it's getting better. Uh, the way the deeper you drill, but in general, let's say we're focused on the same amount of weight is transfer uh, is available for you. But then you look at the weight, uh, the differential pressure on the motor is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. What is that telling me? This is telling me you're having less weight transfer to the bit from surface, which means they are getting hang up somewhere. There's no way around it. So in order for us to take a deeper look into this, we start thinking about the spiral of that. Right, and because the problem from here, it just gets worse and worse and worse. So when we look at the fundamentals and the literature, it's very, very well documented. What does the spiral of death stands for? So this is a typical example, okay, of a well with some tortuosity where we have stabilizers. So let's say we have already stabilizers in your uh, in your well bore, and then uh, in your uh, in your drill string, and then. Stabilizer, there's already some kind of spirality and some tortuosities. They are gonna hang up on these uh, on these hump on these spirals, right? And then when they're gonna hang up on that, they're gonna take some of the weight from the bit. So the weight on bit that is getting transferred, the weight that is getting transferred to the bit is gonna actually decline. And then you already have some bit world. It's gonna increase actually. And then now with the bit world increase, you're gonna, you're gonna start having the more weight going to the stabilizer. And once and keep repeating that process, eventually that's going to trigger some stick slip. And what's the first thing that drillers see when it's a stick slip? They start pulling out uh, from the weight. So just put less weight to the bit. And guess what? Now the problem gets worse. And now the world gets worse. And then the stabilizer is getting another. Uh, they're going to take more load and et cetera, et cetera. And this is just a recipe for going over and over and over and over again. And the problem is only going to get worse. And we have very well documented work from uh, industry pioneers showing actual data with caliper logs showing how the wellbore actually look, right? And then with all this spirality and all that. And also we've looked very carefully and, and uh, there's a lot of great information showing the relationship between the weight on bit and uh, the wellbore quality, because this is exactly what, uh, this is at the end of the day, the ultimate and what really matters. And we've seen that in certain cases, without going into all the cases, into the BHA design and all that, but in, in, in general, okay, if you can increase the weight transfer to the bed, you're most likely gonna drill a better shape wellbore, okay? And we've seen that from entering from one formation to another and all of that, but we've noticed that uh, if you can increase that weight transfer to the bed, you're gonna drill a better weight uh, shape wellbore, because if you don't, you're gonna start. Uh, you're gonna start wiping off stabilizers and bringing off bits, and that's gonna lead into a very costly um, BHA and non-productive time and all that. So this is why it's so important. So we talked about the geomechanics, we talked about the drill string mechanics, we talked about the literature. So it's very very obvious that there's always gonna have some spirality, and you're always gonna be challenged with some kind of formation that is just you need some kind of safety net to get out of the well bore. So, so the question is, what is the solution to it? Is the solution just to put a reamer in there? Absolutely not. I think the solution to fix the problem at its source, we need to properly stabilize these BHAs. That's number one. However, even if we properly stabilize these BHAs, you're always going to have some spirality in the hole. You're never going to uh, drill a, a straight wellbore, just like we talked before. 
So in order for us to do that, it's important to have a smart stabilizer in the hole. So a smart stabilizer will look like something like the gondrel reamer, which has passive PVC cutting structure on the down reaming side and the up reaming side, meaning that this PVC cutting structure is under gauge, that it's not gonna touch or do anything unless absolutely needed, such as you have some spirality, such as you have some uh, tortuosities, the ledges that you talked about from geomechanics. And I've had clients asking for this tool only for the back reaming side, right? And then because they know by the time they make it to TD and they tripping out of the well bore, they, there's a big chance they're going to get stuck. So they would like to have that back reaming side. That all they need to do is just rotate and get out of the well bore because this PVC will condition your well bore. It's not going to make it perfect, but it's going to make it a much better condition than what it was, which kind of affect your full life well cycle. And we've seen that multiple and multiple times with the pacing running speeds and all that. And that's one. Two, we've done a lot of work when, about the uh, regarding the wrap angle, looking at the industry recommendation uh, from our uh, pioneers in the industry. And usually the rule of thumb uh, for, for this GDR, the way we design it is to have a light of sight. So we can see light from one way to another. So that's one. Another one, we looked at also how we can maximize bypass, right? In order for cutter evacuation and all that. And also we've ha it has other features on the gauge. We can put TCIs, we can put all kind of uh, gauge uh, options such as laser cladding on hard face, different types of hard face, and it really depends on the area we're drilling with. Uh, in the area you're drilling, just like Europe, Middle East, Latin America over here, it, depending on the type of formation, what customer wants and all of that. So this is all be, could be customized. So we're talking about the smart stabilizer. It's a stabilizer by fixing the problem at its source by properly placing that stabilizer, but also it has this PDC cutting structure that's kind of condition your well bore and kick in when absolutely needed. And this is a picture here showing that this is a perfect straight well bore, which doesn't exist in my opinion. And your PDC cutting structure, they're not gonna be doing anything in terms of contact with it. But then as soon as this well bore start collapsing on you or you have some spir uh, spirality or tortuosity, just like Dan was talking about, in his case study, he noticed going from eight and a half to one and a half under gauge. So in this case, we don't want your tortuosities and your wellbore wall to be hanging on a stabilizer and get hung up and going into the uh, spiral of death that's going to eventually affect your performance and you're going to end up tripping out of the wellbore and incre increase non-productive time. So that's why it's important to have these PDC features uh, in there to provide you that safety net. And also in application engineering, we have the capabilities to do all kinds of modeling, such as we use uh, very well uh, industry, uh, well-known uh, software such as drill scan to model your drill string. Because obviously the first question that when you start optimizing your BHA design in terms of uh, stabilizer placement. Okay, the first question operator or uh, direction company is going to ask, well, what about my directional behavior? Well, I'm going to lose the build rate. Well, what about this? What about that? And, and just like Ben was saying, I mean, there's a lot of things to do. It's not only um, sta stabilization is um, very important. And I think it should be one of the main things to, to think about. But also, we look at the, bit ba uh, the fixed band housing angle. Is it necessary to have a certain above two degrees or 183, for example, in your vertical. And we know, and that's gonna eventually affect uh, your spirality and it's gonna decrease your bending moment uh, if you can optimize that thing and just pretty much uh, drilling a better well body wall. And what we can do with that also, although we don't recommend nobody, I don't, we don't recommend back reaming in general and we try to defeat back reaming by running the proper stabilizer such as a gondra reamer uh, because a lot of customers the we would like one of the objectives is we want to decrease back reaming uh, time and reaming and back reaming time because i mean i've had customers in the middle east and other places where three days of total with reaming and back reaming time which is a lot of non-productive time so we've used the gondrel everywhere in the world to decrease those the reaming back reaming uh, time to um, uh, to increase that 
oral and I'm going to get into that in a second in my casing studies and also increase that uh, casing running speed. So although we don't recommend say uh, back creaming, but eventually sometimes it's needed and customers usually ask, what is my safe back creaming speed? And we have our softwares where we can calculate that in order not to leave any BHA down hole. So moving on to the case studies, I'm not gonna go into all of them. I just chose a couple uh, for this presentation. So this is a case study where we had a six inch hole uh, with a five inch motor and a problem customer were, asked, were going through all kinds of problems from weight on bit fluctuation, poor sliding ROPs, well path corrections, all of those meaning what? Meaning the weight that you're having available to you is getting hung up somewhere. So by using the GDRs, uh, we were able to increase uh, performance of drilling and we see that an increase in sliding ROP by 31% whenever you're drilling, you're using your GDR versus you're not. Uh, we saw a decrease in uh, surface torque and this is extremely important because when a customer usually or anybody sees a reamer, a, a stabilizer with PDC, although we explain very well that these are passive, the first question they're going to say, well, I'm going to see an increase in torque. Well, you might see an increase in torque locally around the GDR, but this is because it's absolutely needed because you're drilling a spiral hole and you're not having a hole and this needs to be conditioned. So yes, it could be, you could have, you will have a torque increase locally, but we notice whenever we're running the GDR, the overall surface torque, the surface torque overall in the well is decreasing and by significant amount, which tells me that you're having a better well bore uh, wall condition. And also there's a lot of KPIs that a lot of people look at and MSE is one of them. And in my opinion, maybe the lack of uh, one KPI that everybody agrees on, it could be part of it. It's not, there's no one thing that we can look at and we say, okay, this is exactly what the well borough is because usually it's different uh, factor that plays into it. But in terms of the wellbore quality, we look at also, in addition to MSC, we look at the open hole friction factor. And we've noticed uh, uh, on every time we're using a GDR in general, that we've seen a reduction in open hole friction factor. In this case study, it was by 29%. And then that tells me that your wellbore quality is in getting enhanced. It's never gonna be perfect. I'm not claiming that a reamer or a stabilizer, smart stabilizer is gonna make you drill a straight hole. That's not the point. The point is it's gonna make it better. It's gonna help you uh, transfer more weight to the bed. It's gonna condition your well bore better, which means it's gonna affect your well life cycle from um, casing deployment, from cementing, et cetera, et cetera. And this is another case study, which is pretty close to the first one, however, we saw a dramatic increase in sliding ROPs, which is again, a more weight transfer to the bed, a reduction in open hole friction factor by 25%. But this one I really liked is because we looked at uh, casing running speed and we saw that the casing running speed increased by up to 10%, which tells me that, and a lot of time we forget, we focus on one thing. And I think the gentleman uh, right before me, he was talking about, uh, there's a miscommunication that I totally agree with. There's a miscommunication between departments. There's lack of communications. Usually we care about one section of the well bore and we forget what happens later. And it takes you uh, weeks to talk about the, the next engineer to understand exactly what the problem is. So, I mean, we would love, this is a challenge that we've always faced, but we overcome it with facilitating this com uh, communication with case studies and, and showing that when you're running a GDR, you're gonna affect your full life life cycle, not only um, your drilling section, and then by looking at casing running speed and well bore quality. So, talked about the well bore quality. Why is it so important, and how it's affecting the well life cycle? So we can agree on that. Uh, in terms of the challenges, they're very real, especially when we're talking about the geomechanics and and also the uh, the drill string mechanics, and they're very costly. So. The fundamentals are there, let's not forget about them. And then the literature is there and I think we should pay more attention to it. And sometimes it doesn't hurt to get back to it and look back at the fundamentals. We all know the, the saying, well, let's go back to the fundamentals to, to, to solve the problem. And I think this is one of the cases here. So, and we've shown that using a smart stabilizer, which by uh, fixing the problem at its source, whenever we're uh, positioning it in the right place in the BHA. This is fixing the problem right at source for me. 
but also you fix it at a source, you place it at the right place in the BHA, and then you have additional feature that's gonna shown to be effective on well bore quality and affecting the full well life cycle. And this is a tool we have, which is a Gundra Reamer, which we've been using everywhere in the world and very, very successful with. Thank you guys uh, so much for your uh, time and uh, I appreciate you having me today. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to assist.